It's Seahawks Today by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us. Coming up on today's show, we'll catch up to speed on the latest Seahawks news and rumors as we're going to be talking about signing Cameron Fleming as well as Jordan Brooks's fifth-year option being declined and also what Pete Carroll had to say about his new star young receiver, Jackson Smith and Jigma. We'll get to all of that coming up in a matter of moments. Before we do, we put this challenge out there to the 12s earlier in the week that last week we had such a huge week here on the channel with over 700 subscribers gained and we want to take it up another notch. I think we can beat last week's number of 734 subscribers. So there's the challenge out there. Let's see how you guys can do. Subscribe today for the latest happenings on your favorite team. We're doing live shows every Wednesday. Just because the draft is over doesn't mean we're, we're going to stop talking about your team. We're still covering OTAs, minicamp, free agency, trades, and more right here on the channel. Subscribe now. Turn on notifications. If the Seahawks make a move, we're going to do whatever we can to bring you a video and bring you breaking news coverage here on the channel. Subscribe for free today, and we'll get started with today's show. Pro Football Focus has named Seattle as the top landing spot for offensive tackle Cameron Fleming. And I know what you're thinking here. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. Didn't the Seahawks draft Charles Cross and Abraham Lucas last year? And didn't they have pretty good years as rookie tackles? Yes and yes. But hear me out on this. This is what PFF had to say on why... Cameron Fleming could be a potential good fit for the Seahawks. Here's more from Brad Spielberger. Seattle started two rookies at tackle in 2022, and both played quite well under the circumstances. But when right tackle Abraham Lucas missed time, they had to turn to 2021 seventh-round pick Stone Forsythe, who earned a 37 grade over 122 snaps. That's not good allowing seven pressures at a rate of 10% on pass-blocking snaps. The veteran Fleming would be a stabilizing presence as a solid veteran swing tackle, fortifying a roster that looks ready to be competitive in 2023. Fleming earned a career-high 72.6 grade on a career-high 976 snaps in 2022 with the Broncos and Hackett. The 30-year-old would also put his swing tackle prowess on display with Nine starts at right tackle and six at left tackle, earning grades right around 70 on each side of the line. This isn't a bad idea for a backup tackle, quite frankly. And I know what you may be thinking when you look into some of the numbers besides the nerd stats from PFF of just raw statistics. They tell you, hey, Cam Fleming gave up seven sacks last year, which is bad. But the PFF numbers, the nerd numbers look pretty good for Fleming. Now, here's the thing, though, when it comes to Fleming as far as where I'm being realistic here is that there's enough teams with needs out there where Cam Fleming might somewhere have the chance to start, okay? And so that kind of drives up the price tag a little bit. Comparably speaking, things in Seattle, no matter what, he would not be the starter. And so do you want to spend the money on Cameron Fleming – uh, to be the starting, uh, to be a rotational tackle, right? Um, and compared to the teams that would be spending the money potentially to you know be a starter, I, I just don't know if that's worth it to Seattle, if they can really be competitive money-wise to some of these teams that are looking uh, at Cameron Fleming for, for where they could fit him in. So Cameron Fleming, not a bad idea. I think the Seahawks do need to evaluate their options potentially for what, you know, they should do with the offensive tackle spot. But I, I don't know if Cameron Fleming necessarily is going to be coming to Seattle when he might have more opportunities to get more playing time elsewhere. So with that said, what, what do you guys think? Should Seattle, if they can, sign Cameron Fleming? Why for yes, in for no. What do you guys think? Should Seattle bring in the big fella that was with the Denver Broncos? Let us know in the comment section. You might get an ad break. If so, take advantage of it while well, the ad, ad's playing. Get your votes in. Tell me one way or the other. Why for yes, in for no, if Seattle should add Cam Fleming or not. According to ESPN, the Seahawks have declined linebacker Jordan Brooks's fifth-year option. 
as he was going to be owed a lot of moolah. It was going to be in the range of about $13 million that he was set to make in 2024 if his option was picked up. Now, if you've been watching this show, you guys would know that uh, we've been telling you that we didn't expect Jordan Brooks' fifth-year option to get picked up, and let me explain why. He tore his ACL in Week 17, right? Uh, not ideal. We don't know what he's going to look like when he comes back from the ACL injury, let alone what his timetable of his return will be. Pete Carroll and company say that he's progressing well, but does well mean he's in time for the season, or does that mean later on in the year? That all remains to be seen. And so with him not getting his fifth-year option picked up, that would make him a free agent at the end of next year, and the Seahawks won't have to pay him that $13 million. And think about this with Jordan Brooks. Jordan Brooks, I think, is a fine football player. He has done a really good job, for the most part, for this Seattle Seahawks team. But the truth of the matter is, he still has a lot to prove this season, okay? Okay. Not just because he's in a contract year, because he didn't get his fifth-year option, but the ACL injury. And then you also factor in that, you know what, the nerds at PFF and others are pretty critical of Jordan Brooks. I'll explain here in just a second. Now, granted, you go back to 2021, second in the league in tackles. He was phenomenal. A tackling machine. I mean, he, he was all over the field, right? And prior to this injury, the ACL injury that he had in Week 17, this has been somebody the Seahawks had been able to count on. Played in 47 games in the last three seasons, 39 starts. But this is when the red flags start to get raised. This is what I'm talking about. Besides the ACL injury and all that, PFF grades Jordan Brooks overall as a 53 run defense 65.2, pass rush, 66, and a coverage grade of 40.7. The nerd numbers say that's not great for Jordan Brooks. Now, I think there's a middle ground of some sorts. I get where PFF may not like Jordan Brooks, but you can't ignore the raw tackle numbers that Jordan Brooks puts together and comes up with. I think there's a middle ground. Jordan Brooks is a fine football player, but there's still work to be done. I think both those things can be true. So, with that said, what's your confidence level that Jordan Brooks comes back from injury in this contract year and that he puts it all together, that he has a good year this year? Scale it for me, 1 through 10 in the comment section. Let me know. What do you think? What's your confidence level in Jordan Brooks in 2023? Let us know in the comment section. Scale it 1 through 10 and let me know. In a moment, we'll talk about Jackson Smith and Jigba, but before we do, now is your chance to get a Jackson Smith and Jigba jersey, as well as Devin Witherspoon. On draft night, they had their names called by Roger Goodell, and it was a pretty awesome moment for both these guys to be on stage, wearing that Seahawk jersey, and the number one. Good news for all the 12s out there is that those draft night jerseys that they were holding on screen, that neither one are going to be wearing the number one again, But you know what? You can get this jersey. Whether you want to put it in your man cave or you want to wear it to the stadium, whatever it may be, this collector's item that's not going to be around for a very long time is available to you on sale now at chatsports.com slash Seahawks Rookies. So what are you waiting for? Get yours today, chatsports.com slash Seahawks Rookies, while supplies last, just for a limited time, and you'll be glad you did. Chatsports.com slash Seahawks Rookies. Jackson Smith in Jigba. I am so excited to see that he's a member of the Seattle Seahawks after being drafted number 20 overall in the first round by Seattle. And Pete Carroll, uh, within the last couple days, had some high praise about JSN and talked about how fired up he is about the rookie's role in the Seattle offense. And you think about it, you got Geno coming back, you already have two stud receivers in Lockett and Metcalf, Kenneth Walker's coming off a good rookie year, Zach Charbonnet, of course, you draft in the second round, as well as Kenny McIntosh. Watch out. The Seahawks offense is going to be explosive, and JSN is going to be a big part of why. Here's more from Pete Carroll. 
We wanted to compliment Tyler and DK and make sure that we could maximize how we use those guys. And it did mean for us to come up with a guy that we could count on to play inside. Jackson was extremely effective doing that, and he has a real natural sense about the way he plays and how he fits there. So it was more than just getting Jackson. It was about how it was going to enhance the other guy's play as well. I'm really fired up about it. He's a really consummate guide in terms of his work, his route running, his catching. He's got terrific hands. We're really fired up, and he's come through. He's a come-through guy, and we think he's going to fit in well. Look, I'll say this, and I'll say it again. I think the sky is the limit for Jackson Smith and Jigba on what he can achieve in this Seahawks offense. And eventually, you know, Tyler Lockett uh, will move on, whether it's retiring as a Seahawk at some point or if he moves to another team, whatever it may be. He's in his 30s now. He's dealt with some injury issues. Whenever the day comes that JSN – is the next guy in line to be the number two receiver to play along DK. He's going to be ready for the call. And I know that there might be some concerns about, well, he missed most of last year. He had the hamstring injury and all that. I I don't have any worries personally about a nagging hamstring injury from a year ago. I think he's going to be just fine. And if you want a glimpse into what JSN can do on any given day, Uh, of being explosive, you want a sample size, let me point you to the 2021 Rose Bowl game from uh, the Rose Bowl Stadium in Pasadena, California, with what he was able to do against the Utah Utes. Look at these numbers you're seeing on your screen right now. I mean, guys don't do this all the time, okay? I mean, think about this. He was playing alongside two NFL receivers at – Ohio State with Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave. And he did this. 15 catches, 346 yards, averaged 23 yards of reception and had three touchdowns. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen in the NFL, but just knowing that even in a crowded receiving room, that JSN can stand out like that and play to that high level, watch out. He is going to be spectacular in Seattle. Blood bank guarantee. Are you all in? On Jackson Smith and Jigba. Are you feeling like I feel about JSN? Tell me in the comment section. B for buy, S for sell. What do you think about JSN in Seattle? Tell us in the comment section. B for buy, S for sell. Hit me up on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, at Tyler Jones Live. You can find me there talking about your Seattle Seahawks, and we'll see you next time. Right here on Seahawks Today.